the Baco Force Ergo model and it's a 24 inch blade and if you look back on my channel way way back you'll see this is one of my top 10 all time pieces of kit it's approximately 20 pound it was 20 pound when I bought it and you get two different types of blades with it for greenwood and hardwood the reason I've stuck with this saw for so long I've had a lot of better saws than this the silky saw uh, the big boy I had it's a much more efficient saw when it comes to actually sawing and it can pack into your rucksack or bergen much easier but the downfalls with the silky saws I find is it's four times more expensive than this one is and it's ten times more fragile and that's the reason I don't use them I'll show you what we can do with the saw that you would normally do with an axe so imagine this was a fully grown tree and I want to bring it down so we need to remove this stump anyway so I'm just going to start sawing through on the face cut so you've been chopping in at the moment with an axe doing this now I've had this blade for six months on the saw and it's still going really good. I'm going to try and keep this cut nice and level. That should do it. So that's my base cut. Right, the next cut then is the pitch cut. And we're coming down here. When you think you've got the hinge where you want it, just give it a kick out. There you go. So staying your wedge out like this. Nice and clean. And that's a good thing about it. Now, if you look at it, I want it about at least a, an inch from this point here to here and I want it to be at least two inches high my next cut so the back cut is going to be approximately this height okay and that's another thing you can do with the saw you go in with a horizontal cut with the back cut okay now if this was a fully grown tree obviously you'd have your escape routes all cleared and look at the direction of fall that this is going to go in make sure you don't run in that direction And depending how far you go in, it's known as a slow hinge, I can make the tree topple down under control using the saw. So that's that cut in. And all I do for there is just push, and there we go. And there's the backstop. Right, and as you can see here, when we pushed the tree, it actually snapped in front of the hinge rather than in the hinge in here. And that's one of the problems when you're dealing with rotten wood or dead wood. It has its own character and it doesn't always do what you plan. So this is why you have to have your escape routes worked out, cleared, all the preparation work done before you go about taking down or felling large trees okay but there you go the bow saw done that for us and then all I do for here is just take that off and that gives me a nice clean stump for chopping the rest of my material Right, another use we can use the saw for is to do a bit of sneading. Obviously the axe is a lot more efficient, but the saw can do it as well. And it gives you a lot of control. There's some fat wood there. It gives you a nice clean cut. In a survival situation, probably use a bit more energy. 
so it might not be appropriate. But if this is the only tool you've got, well, this is how we go about using it and making it efficient. And there's some fat wood. Right. So, branches on top like this, rather than come down your head, you've got nice control. There we go. That's another reason I like to use the bow saw. And obviously, another use for the saw, its intended purpose is to take the logs down. Fast, efficient at doing it, much more efficient than an axe. So, the axe, if we want to do some hewing like this here, flatten off one side, I'm going to do this to build a bench. So we need to put some V cuts in to allow us to hew the wood. So the axe would normally do it like this. Take it out like this. Okay, then we've well, got knots here, so this is probably not a good example. There we go. So, just down to safety, I prefer to put saw cuts in rather than an axe cut. Okay, so. I'll show you how I just go about doing that. Better control and depth, the placement of the cut. I just feel this is a quicker way for me to do it. Some knots there. Right, and then all we do for there, come along. There. That's us to the first cut, there's the saw cut there. There's the second one. And there's my third cut. You can actually see it in. And then you just work your way down to the correct deck. This is a heavy hatchet, this one. And obviously, it's no the right tool. But there you go, fast and efficient way of doing it. Use it as a measuring tool, and it's just a rough estimate. So the cutting blade itself is 24 inches, but I guesstimate this would be about from this point here to this point here, 27 inches. So here I'm got my log. Take it to the end, place it there, tip it over to oh, three, so it's just short of three. And then I bring it here then. There's one to that mark, two that mark, and it's just going to be short. So an inch short, so I've got a saw here. Look how accurate it is then. Yep, that's good enough. Just need to get these edges cut straight. I'm 
another use for the saw as a measuring stick.